Alright, time for another draft science video presentation. And such. Yeah, well. Toys and such. Anyway, so I'll read one comment and probably get to the subject of um, the whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know, electromagnetic radiation. Um, but no, the whole idea of how uh, conductors, how electricity creates um, a magnetic field. Um, a transmitting change in the momentum uh, of the universe or something like that. Anyway, what's moving through it. So, this, you know, these comments just are so irritating. So, Mr. Arrogant with his little 19 whatever, 32, I'm going to do Mars code kind of crap. You know, living in the past, you know, the long dead past. Anyway, you're both right. No, no, we're not both right. I mean, the, the argument is, uh, in the video you watched, it was about whether it's jamming, and the signal is still there, or wave interference. So the argument is, is whether somehow radiation interferes with radiation, whether light interferes with light, whether radio waves can interfere with radio waves. That's the argument, whether it's like sound and like water, and the the fundamental argument made in the video is clearly it's not like those things. It's not like a medium. It's not like an ether. It doesn't allow for there to be any interference. There is none of that taking place. The whole thing proven in the video is that their argument is fallacious, that they're, this is wave-like behavior. The whole point of the video is demonstrating how, no, it's not wave-like behavior. It's not like water, and it's not like sound. That the the real universe, the empty space, isn't some sort of goo, and the goo isn't doesn't allow waves to mix with each other. That the forces are all independent little pieces of, of momentum, and they go from point A to point B, and the point B, the only, uh, the only thing that can be a point B is a piece of matter, because the forces can't interact with the forces. Gravity can't affect gravity. Gravity can't affect light. All of this stuff can't happen. A force can't in any way meaningfully interact with another force unless there's a piece of matter for them both to be hitting. That's the, the theory being proven in the video. So you can't say, oh, you're both right. No, you can't be both right. No, it can't be. <laughs> okay. It's a wave like sometimes. What, what is this wave like sometimes? I mean, is this just. You think this is a rational way to talk about the physical universe. Well, it's Jesus-like sometimes, and then sometimes it's Mohammed-like. La, 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 la. Sometimes it's squirrel-like, sometimes it's banana-like. Blah, 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 blah. You don't know how that's just baby talk, that the reality is one thing, that there's one fucking reality. There's not these duality realities. It's not up and down. It's not left and right. Oh, shit. And particle-like at other times. La, 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 la. You just don't see how that is just cop-out, lazy, useless rubbish where you should just say, I have absolutely no clue and I can't tell the difference between, you know, a blackbird and a crow and a raven. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't. It's raven-like sometimes and it's crow-like and it's, it all confuses me and I have no good answers. It's, why don't you just tell the truth? You have no answer. I'm saying exactly the opposite. I'm saying, no, the answer is really deducible here. We have enough evidence to convict. We have enough evidence to know that photons really are discrete, tiny little things in the essence, the momentum is, and that it's a pattern, yes, okay, but the pieces aren't connected to each other in any way. The forces can't interact in any way. And if you see an effect that looks strange, there is an explanation. <laughs> okay, anyway. The ether, la 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 la, has the duality built into it. No, it can't really do that. There's no duality if there's an ether. If there's one of your say, your silly ethers, then yes, somehow the waves are interacting with the waves or whatever the crap is in space, and they're bothering each other somehow, and somehow they know how to turn that on and turn that off. I'm just saying, I've already proven that doesn't work. Because it can't turn it off and turn it on. You can't have it both ways. You can't have a photon that has a, a confinement in space and then say, no, there's a bunch of wavelets shooting in all directions and the photon goes everywhere in space because it has infinite amount of energy. No, it doesn't have all of that stuff. 
<sighs> anyway. Longitudinal impulses tend to appear as particles. It says you. <laughs> While transverse impulses tend to appear as waves. Well, that, that just doesn't mean anything. Again, you, you can't see how that's just baby talk. You're just describing two different kinds of waves and saying, you know, well, well one of the ones, it's, yes, it's discrete because it can go in a... It can go in just a, one place, and then the other ones have to spread somehow. No, they both have to spread if they're waves. I mean, you can't change the properties of your ether just because you want to, to describe a certain experiment. The properties have to be the same. So you have to explain how the same properties end up with these different results. Uh, people make the mistake. No, you make mistakes. They make mistakes. All these morons keep making mistakes because you all think... You have, you're, you're, you've grokked something, you've, you've got it in a container, and it's clearly demonstrable that it isn't in any kind of container, that you haven't done any real disciplined, uh, you know, application. You haven't sit there and watched enough of it, and you haven't sit there and analyzed enough of it, and you haven't picked enough at it to realize that it just doesn't work. The theory doesn't work. <sighs> anyway, of using a water wave tank to show how uh, water-like waves don't work in the experiments. Any kind of wave doesn't work. And how do you have some other kind of wave in the first place? How do you even make this other kind of wave in your ether? You can't describe your ether. You can't draw your ether. You can't explain your ether because as soon as you sit there and 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 force yourself to make it do to to function in one way. All of a sudden, half the experiments you can't explain anymore. So as soon as you commit to an ether, then I'll just point out how, well, where's a straight line in that bullshit? How, how the hell do I get from point A to point B in a straight line with that silly theory at the same speed every time? Because your, your theory isn't going to create the opportunity for a straight line. Uh, the ether is not like water and is dynamic medium. Well, again, this dynamic word, what does that mean? So again, you know, you keep saying that well, it's dynamic. What does that mean? Like, does it mean the dominoes are already falling in space and there's a whole bunch of energy in this field? What does it exactly mean? And how do I add up these impulses? How do dominoes make double domino or triple domino or quadruple domino? They really can't. Okay, they can only do this little wobbly thing. Your ether can only do this. Okay, it can't really add. It can't make something more intense it can just do one thing I, I went this way that's all I can do well anyway there's lots you know well whatever. so it's really not my job to debunk flat earth and it's not my job to sit here and waste a whole bunch of time on what is superfluous to the point whether you make the universe out of ether or not had absolutely nothing to do with the video the video was about the fact that you can deduce okay in different ways that their theory of waves interfering with each other isn't the right answer and that you can understand that oh yeah there is still a radiation showing up at all those places where we can't see it and we only can't see it because yes the radiation is out of phase and our receivers de are dependent on it they're being in phase so, you know the so the argument was really simple you're completely off the subject and uh, again, I guess I would argue your dependency on ether is exactly the opposite argument I'm making. Because clearly, without an ether, without forces interacting with forces, of what value would this ether be? It means nothing. It doesn't improve anybody's understanding of the fact that momentum is traveling from one location to another. Whether you believe there's a bunch of little dominoes that flip, 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 or whether you believe the domino just jumps... How is that change the fundamental physics? That is, there's momentum in the universe, and the momentum doesn't go everywhere. Okay, one, one little thing can't make a whole bunch of other things do something just as strong as it's doing it. That You have to have conservation of energy. One domino can't knock over 400 million dominoes and then cause 400 different rays of domino power. enough of that shit. Ugh, I hate comments. All right.
Sorry. <laughs> I waited to make this video. I said, oh, you have to be in a better mood, Gary. You can't make a video in this, you know, just so sick of this shit mood. But I did anyway. I mean, I never, the mood just didn't improve. <sighs> That's the way it worked. So, um, so this is a draft. Okay, this, you know, I don't have all this all the way figured out yet. But again, we have this traditional notion of a magnet. And these stupid, damn, idiotic lines of uh, field lines, flux lines, they call it. You know, this crap. They always draw this crap, right? And they think something is doing, you know, in the, in the Faraday case, okay, where you have the conductor. And then you have all the compass needles doing this, you know, 50-50 thing. You know, uh, how to draw a compass needle, north-south. <laughs> yeah, with one color. Well, anyway, you get the idea. The compass needles balance to the conductor. All right. Which is kind of strange. I mean, you think they'd either point north or they point south, but they do this balance thing. And so the same thing's happening here. So we have these, these lines that line up, okay? And I've tried to explain that it's just because these are all going to be magnets here. And all these magnets repel each other, okay? They all have the, the north side here, let's say. This will be south, and this is north, and then this is south down here. And so they all lined up the same, and they're repelling each other. And that's why there's dead space between them. And that's the only reason, all right, is because they're repelling each other. And they have to commit to one or the other. And but So the real argument is, is this is an illusion. Okay, this isn't, this isn't the real function. There isn't a bunch of energy going through these pathways or going around these pathways or any of that stuff. They can never make something move when it's on these uh, things. And the only way that it's going to move, if it's going to move, it's going to move towards the magnet. That's what it really wants to do. I mean, the only way you can see these lines, these fake lines, is to create some mechanism that doesn't allow the iron filing to do what it really wants to do, which is turn and jump right into the magnet. So anyway, <clears throat> so the real thing that's happening is just like charge, there's just a bunch of these straight lines coming out of a magnet. You know, it's just straight lines coming out. And what you're doing, okay, is when you have two different kinds of lines. The north side is producing a line, the south side is producing lines. And the trick is, is their, their orientation, the pattern they're producing is different. Okay, so uh, we can do dotted line, I suppose, and dotted line here dotted line here and then dotted line in here and dotted line in here and dotted line in here so there's a difference in the pattern this is on off on off and this is off on off on off on you could even make that kind of argument and magnets can see the pattern okay where a single electron can't see the pattern and all the single electron knows is, is is it moves closer okay so let's say there were two kinds of lines in here so let's just make these squiggly lines I mean, I probably should have done it with two colors. I just didn't want to force you to believe in the two <laughs> different fields. But anyway, and the idea is, is as something moves through the field, like say something moved through this field, you could see that it's going to hit one line, and then it's going to hit the other line, and it's going to hit this line, and it's going to hit the other line. All right, so, and that's really what's happening when this pattern is out there, is that there's forces hitting things. Maybe I should go with this diagram. Um, and it's changing, you know, based on what line you're hitting. So there's not a line this way. There's lines this way. And as you move closer, you end up hitting one more than you hit another one, all that kind of stuff. All right. Let's see if I can... So you can't be... You shouldn't be fooled by where things line up. You have to try to understand why they're lining up. So it's just kind of like the gravity. I mean, it's as simple as the gravity argument. You could argue that if you just realize that gravity is being created by the fact that more energy goes into the Earth than energy that comes out. So less comes out than goes in. And so, therefore, anything on the surface is going to be feeling more pressure from the outside than they are from the bottom up. And so they're going to be pushed in. So it's that simple. And orbits are something you see, but an orbit doesn't really mean anything, right? Because you know that really that's all that's happening in the orbit, right? Is that you have motion in this direction and you're being pushed in this direction. 
and there's going to be a difference between those two constantly this pressure pushing you down but there was no circle in space your velocity decides where the circle is going to be <laughs> you know there's no circle in space there's no place in space that says I am a circle around the earth or anything like that so the the matter is deciding um, its position decides um, but there's no there's no <clears throat> pathway already there uh, the pathway is a composite of actions happening constantly all right so here's the conductor argument so um, what's happening with a conductor when you put electricity into it and so it's going through the wire and we're getting this effect on a compass needle where somehow the compass needle knows okay we'll just mark it north and south and somehow <coughs> it's sensing okay that there's more of a certain kind of magnetism coming from one end than it's coming from the other end in the sense that it's lining up as if let's see how's the best, best way to describe it <sighs> see if it, it was a if it was a magnetic field that it could discern it would tilt it would tip because it would see more north one way and one more south the other way and somehow it's seeing exactly a balance that it can't interact with it can't move more this way if this was looking more south so what I'm going to argue is that the conductor is really a bunch of atoms and the atoms the only way they can transfer energy to each other is they have to have a difference between each other so the idea is is they have to be oriented well it's probably better to make it bigger and exaggerate it all right so for so the atoms are essentially shaped and what they're doing is they're complementing their shape in the fact of how they arrange with each other all right so it's like they are polarized and they have to arrange their polarization so it's complementary so you know they're always arranged with fat next to thin and you know so they're all opposites okay and so the idea is is when you put electricity in what you're doing is is creating a circumstance where they're going to convey the electricity by changing those orientations and obliging each atom to share it so if they're natural so the natural condition is is to be balanced so I drew them in balance to to make the point that as soon as I imbalance one then they have to start all imbalancing oh, this is just... all right. <clears throat> see lesson plans should be thought of ahead of time <laughs> um, all right so what do I so all right so <clears throat> what I'm going to argue is happening is is that these the conductor is not only moving electricity this way but all the stuff sideways to each atom the atom is the atoms are literally changing okay as they as they move electricity so one atom pushes and shares its energy with an atom next to it and then they both move the same way okay they share it that wasn't terribly helpful uh, it might have helped might have woke you up you know keep you in the game um, so the point is is that what, what I'm arguing is is that this is going to have uh, a, a, a viewable change in the shape of something so you're tilting something so the idea would be is that let's see how can I show it all right so if I drew the atom as an angle this way when electricity goes through the angle changes so the angle changes from this to this right and then that exchanges with the next atom okay so that one tilts and this one goes back right and then this one tilts and this one goes back and so the idea is is it's constantly just going from one position to another position all right but the position is from here okay so it goes from being this way to being this way now you can sort of understand that it goes from being this way to being this way from going this way to going this way so you can see that from one side you're seeing that and from this side you're going to see exactly the opposite right you're going to see things going from this way to this way you know and this way to this way and this way to this way so from the two sides you're going to see the 
exact opposite of this. So this is going in and it's making the atoms all do this. And obviously from this side, you know, from one side you're going to see this and from this side you're going to see this, which is this moving towards you. From this side it looks like it's moving away from you. So you can sort of get the idea that those are two different things, right? It's going from this to more directly pointing towards you from directly pointing towards you to pointing away from you. So the two sides can can will look different and it's just because what you've really done is change the angle that you're looking at an atom. So if this, you know, just draw the atom and try to say it in a more clear way, more explicit. So what's happening when the electricity goes into the atom, an electron is going from here, let's say, and it's moving to here, right? So you're moving the position of an electron, which means the proton goes from being not visible, right? When the electron's here, from here, the proton isn't as visible. When the electron moves to here, now you can see the proton. So in a sense, the electron is turning the proton on and off and on and off, like a light. So it's turning the proton on and off. And if you were here, obviously you'd see the proton go from off to on, on, on to off, on to off. So depending on where you are viewing it from, it'll look different, but it's always going to be on and off. So it's going to be on and off in a different sequence, right? And so obviously from these positions, from the further down you go, obviously that is going to look more like, you know, off, I mean on to off. You know, the, the electron moves here, you know, you've turned it off. <laughs> okay, so, so, um, so that's why the compass needle can't decipher it is because it's constantly turning on and off, which means it's constantly saying, come, don't, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. It's sending a yes, no signal. It's not sending a come towards me signal. So that's why it interprets it as a balance. And it just balances to the pressure but obviously one side is south and one side is north in the sense that from one side it looks like more protons from the other side it looks like more electrons it looks they're seeing more of the protons so from one side they see the electron from one side they see the more protons and that's the the real mechanism now um all right, now to get from there to the motor force and all of this other stuff, it you know gets like I said, we know which that the current actually does move through the wire in a direction, and so now the question is, so the, the if you kept the current going this way, then you know the atoms that you're banging into, you're changing each one, so you're taking atoms that were circular, right, and you you make one a different shape, and so the next atom is still a circle, and so now it's going to share that shape so they both are going to sit there and become um, <sighs> you can understand that they have to have an equality between them a balance between them so the idea is is whatever voltage you put in it will be it has to go through this process of being shared okay of like say if I got 10 volts worth of pressure in this atom then both of these two atoms will adjust to that 10 by both becoming fives, okay? So now you only have five volts here, right? So this next atom is gonna say, well, I can share that, all right? And so now <laughs> that gets the five volts gets shared with this atom and now you have 2.5 volts. And it's that kind of a process. And now that changes this to a lower voltage, right? It went from 5 to 2.5. Well, now this one that's still getting pumped with 10, right? Because you keep pumping it in, um, will now have a bigger uh, differential. And so now they'll try to balance to 10 and 2.5 and end up with 6.5 or whatever. And it just keeps cycling through. This keeps lowering the voltage and this keeps, you know, keep pumping it in here and it keeps transferring the voltage based on just balancing each atom to each other. So what the real argument is, is that these are electrons, let's say connected to atoms, 
And what you're really just saying is, is I'm going to put pressure on this electron and move it, right? And when I move it, the trick is, is that there's pressure moving back and forth between these two, and there's pressure moving back and forth between these two. Now, obviously, this pressure is increasing as I'm pushing on this one, right? I've made this closer. There's more impacts with the pressure. And now this pressure, right, is going to, now this electron is going to feel uh, that it's going to have more pressure on one side than it has on the other side, which obviously means it's going to move. And when it moves, it creates more pressure here. Okay, so now you can see how the pressure starts moving between from one electron to the next electron to the next electron and the process just keeps moving the pressure. So obviously when this electron moved this way it reduced the pressure here, right? So when, it, when the electron goes this way now it's expanding this distance and so now this original electron can go this way because now it's under a little bit less pressure. But you're going to pump more voltage in still. You're going to keep pumping voltage. And so now it's going to move back again and say, I'm under higher pressure. You know, so it's going to keep pumping okay, the pressure until they all become equal. So once you get this last pressure to be 10 volts of pressure, you know the distance between these last two electrons, when you get those to the same distance from each other as all these others, when you've pressurized all of them, then nothing can happen until you let that pressure out. So then you're just stuck, you're clogged. You can't pump any more voltage because all you can pump is 10 volts. You can only pump a certain amount of pressure and now the pressure is in all of these electrons. So you've spread pressure that you had coming in here and you've just spread it into each, into in between each one of these electrons by compressing them, by pushing them closer to each other. And that's basically electricity. And so unless I open a valve to let this pressure push some other electron that has under less pressure until I have a, until I find two electrons that are further apart so I can push one of them, this voltage can't do anything. And so you just that's why nothing happens with DC current. Now if I make it AC current, I'm doing exactly the opposite. I keep releasing the pressure in the opposite direction. So I keep expanding the distance and contracting the distance and expanding, you know, contracting and then expanding, contracting and expanding. So you can understand why if you're doing that, you're constantly changing all these atoms and what they're showing to the world. So the, all the atoms are doing is saying, let's say, okay, that part of the equation is, I should have thrown this in earlier. <coughs> So, if you get that basic idea of the cascading electrons, well, what if, in reality, what happens is when you move, when you push these electrons into each other, they don't move directly into each other, okay? You can't push directly into each other, and there's more electrons down here that it's repelling with, and the electron actually moves up here, right? And that's creating the extra pressure pushing this one this way. So they're really sharing their pressure by also moving out. And it's that outward motion, right, going this way, going this way, that's pushing energy out into the atmosphere. So it's kind of like a water wave in the sense that these are, this is sort of an uncompressible medium. <laughs> and so the energy that was going this way is being converted into some portion in this direction because the electron really can't move directly into the other electron and this is going to be this has less pressure going this way so the electron is not going to move straight in it's going to move in and up and and but it's still connected to a proton so it still has an incentive to move down so those are the competing interests it has and those competing interests keep it in tension but it does do this little movement up because that's easier to go that way than it is directly into the electron and it's that upward motion that by theory so the theory is is that when an electron moves it bangs into force okay and it reflects more force so when it moves into a force it reflects more of that force which means it compresses it so a force was spaced like that and you move an electron into it, when it reflects, if the electron is stationary, it reflects just back exactly the same pattern. But if the electron's moving, then it's going to reflect this pattern instead. Okay? 
it's going to compress this into this. It's going to make it occupy a smaller amount of space. So when an electron moves into energy, it compresses it, okay, into a smaller amount of space. And when the opposite happens, when the electron moves away, it does exactly the opposite. It expands the event, okay, and makes the 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 pattern. It broadens it, it separates it. So you have just this electron moving in this direction is going to compress whatever energy was coming down at it and it's going to reflect that energy now essentially at a higher frequency. It's going to take energy coming in one kind of pattern and push it into a smaller amount of space. And each one of these atoms, each one of these electrons is doing this inversely, you could argue. The one going up is causing this one to go down and that one's causing this one to go up and this one's causing it, that one to go down. So the idea is, is what's getting reflected by each electron is one of them saying, one of them sending a compression. Uh, I'll draw a compression. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'll have to come up with symbols for that. You know, a way of drawing a compression. You know, so, but the idea is that here's the surface. And so the surface in one location is sending, oh, my chalk has failed to be chalk. Um, at one location it's sending, uh, it's, it's poking in, okay, so I could draw that like this and like this and like this. So this is what the surface ends up doing, is, is vibrating, you know, up and then down and then up and then down, up and down. And when it goes up, it compresses, creates a compression, and when it goes down, it creates an expansion. And then it goes a compression again, and that's what's traveling. And <clears throat> those things at different angles, right? And you could sort of understand that at different, of different ways of, let's see, let's see how we can describe the fact that it's doing that, that each set of atoms, that each row of atoms is probably going to be sending it different directions. You know, it's going to be sending this stuff going in different directions. So it's sending the same kind of pattern in all kinds of different directions. And there's something out here is basically going to receive, uh, how to say this, um, these different patterns and it, they'll have different path lengths. And the different path lengths means one piece might be hitting, you know, pushing and one first piece might be, you know, pieces of compression and one piece might be hit, hitting the part that's compressed. And it's really just about matching finding a location where you're hitting all the compressions, you know, that they're all in the same location where if I go a little bit further away, I'll be hitting all expansions. And then if I go a little further away, I'll hit compressions again. It's that kind of idea where you, you can match what's being sent. I mean, that's just too, too simple or too complex an idea of the, the pattern matching part, but that's the part to get to somewhere in here. Um, but, you know, I might have to just admit that I have to draw this ahead of time. I mean, I have to sit there and figure out exactly what order we go through these processes to get the idea that... I don't think you can really get the idea without eventually understanding that there has to be... There's the two kinds of force, that one force is pushing electrons and one force is not. <laughs> and then you'll understand why it doesn't matter when... Uh, I don't even know I want to get to that. Uh, yeah, well, maybe we'll just call it a day and just say, you know, the real thing to understand is that the atoms change when you pump electricity through. All you're doing is you're physically changing the atoms. And for the atoms to share their change, this one has to be at low pressure while this one's at high pressure. Right? The pressure can't go anywhere if they have equal pressure. So you always have to understand they have to be alternating or they can't carry anything. And so that's what conductors allow there to be, is this easy ability to always create this alternating, some way to reset, 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 reset. It constantly enables it to reset, where an insulator doesn't allow the pressure to, 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 
it doesn't allow the pressure to travel from atom to atom to atom to atom. And so one atom stays high, and another atom stays high, and that little group of atoms stays high. And you, you can't pull the pressure off until you put an outside source here and grab the pressure and pull it off. Because it can't just travel through the crystal. Let's just say the crystals aren't connected to each other. So each little piece of each little clump of the material, you know, it's it's going to be made out of a little clump here and a little clump here and a little clump here. I mean, that's how it's made. It isn't made because there's all the atoms are connected to each other. They're just sort of blobs, and the blobs are connected to each other. So this blob can end up being high pressure, and this blob can be low pressure, and this blob can be something else, I mean, low pressure. And they can't communicate their pressure to each other because they're a separate blob. <laughs> you know, and separate blobs just won't do it. Where crystals allow one crystal's pressure to be going into another crystal and into another crystal and into another crystal. So crystals allow the exchange, that's a conductor, where things that don't have crystals can't convey their pressure, don't have crystals connected to each other. Um, they can't communicate. Now the weird thing about glass is that it's an electrical insulator, but it transmits light. <laughs> you know, which means it does, it does, it does transmit in one direction. It just won't transmit in the other. That kind of thing. Um, it'll only transmit, let's say, in, in on these uh, perpendicular lines, straight through and straight through but it won't do it on these angles, maybe. You know, some kind of theory like that. So, I mean, yeah, all of this stuff needs to be explained by each material and each of its construction. But look, the bottom line is, is for the electricity to transmit, it has to be able to go from high pressure to low pressure and high pressure to low pressure and high pressure to low pressure. It has to be able to convey the pressure. And that's really the story is stuff that makes that easy to take place and stuff that makes it hard and the key fact is is when it's in the process of doing that when it's in the process of moving its electron from one position to another position to change the pressure between the atoms that that process does itself create a an effect on the outside universe it's affecting the outside it's affecting the shape of the surface the surface is physically changing from something flat to something you know moving up and something moving down and something moving up and something moving down and the fact is is that it moves at these angles which means that from one side it looks like it's heading right for you from another from this side it looks like it's running away from you from this side it looks like it's running towards you you know the angle is pointing at you where here it's running away from you and that's the that's why it has a turn to it that's why it has a clockwise and a counterclockwise that's why there's a right hand rule is because the change does have the effect it's creating has a is differently seen from different perspectives it doesn't create something like this, you know, that looks the same from both sides, you know, some kind of like a little round thing or something. It doesn't have symmetry. It has an asymmetry. And that asymmetry is what's going to create a south pole and a north pole. So that's the way I wanted to get. And I just didn't get there very smoothly. <laughs> but anyway, you'll have to do for this video. That's why um, it will be labeled draft because it's just not enough. It's not uh, all put together quite right yet. But that's a simple way to understand what's happening: is that when electricity is traveling through atoms, the atoms are being disrupted, and that's why you need low voltage at high amperage to make a wire very magnetic. You can't make it magnetic if you're sending the pressure just through a few atoms high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, high pressure. You need to send a change in the atoms through a whole bunch of atoms. So you use a low voltage, okay, and try to force a whole bunch of wattage through. And that way you'll affect all the atoms and cause all the atoms to change their shape. And so then all the shape changing will change, will create lots of little bumps on the surface, so to speak, bumps 
<laughs> you know, ins and outs. And having lots of that happening means you'll have lots of change in the field. And then you're going to have more um, capacity to uh, have a, a pattern received by something because you've sent more of it. And um, simple answer. Versus, you know, some non-mechanical, wishy-washy field stuff. The field's being created because the, when the matter moves, the force is going to be changed. If I move my hand, I mean, I've done this so many times. Right? If I move my hand forward, you can just kind of understand. I'm definitely capturing stuff that would have taken longer to get to me. And I've now reduced the amount of time it takes for it to get to me. Which means the thing that reflected, would have reflected, you know, based on traveling the full distance, isn't going to reflect then, it's going to reflect sooner. Which means it's going to reflect closer to the one that reflected when it was back here. Those two events now, the reflection here and the reflection here, those two events are now in the same space. And that's the easy explanation for why there's frequencies in the atmosphere. Why energy is in um, lumps of frequency is because every time an electron moves, it's compressing energy on one side of it, and it's expanding energy in the opposite direction it moved. In that direction, the reflections are being spread out because you're moved away and are now creating more time between the time they would have reflected. So you're just expanding and contracting reflections. That's the key to electrodynamics right there. Expanding and contracting reflections off of electrons. Yeah, that's the simple theory being defended. I just didn't defend it very well. <laughs> Better next time. And such. So, uh, this has been you know, a draft science video presentation. And such.